This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Wendy old bag? Oh my gosh. I thank you. What you have given to me is truly something very special. Edgy Boo! <laughs> Crap. M Mr. Edgeworth, are you sure you're feeling okay, sir? Yeah. Mr. Alba, as I suspected, you killed Mr. Cochin in the, in the dressing room. When the old bag actually helps you. How many times must I listen to you repeat yourself? Haven't you figured it out yet? Your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. The only way I'm going to continue to cooperate is with some definitive evidence. <laughs> that arrogance, that self-confidence. You believe that you've erased every piece of evidence that could incriminate you. However, there remains one piece here and it is what will put you away for good. Ha! You're bluffing! Oh -ho! Hey Mr. Prosecutor, sounds like you finally found them. You finally found the fangs we need to go after this guy's jugular. Jugular? So tell us, what about the box of samurai dogs is going to put the old man away? The trace evidence that will bring him down? Why, it's here of course. This box of samurai dogs with a rising sun fan on it. This should never have existed. What are the odds that a drop of blood would make its way directly onto the fan in that way? Oh! What? That's blood? That looks too perfect! <laughs> so I want you all to take a good look at this red spot. It's a single drop of blood. Smell it. Uh-huh! What? Blood, you say? Agent Lane, I'd like this blood analyzed post-haste. I've got to admit, I'm a bit surprised. I can't believe we found blood in a place like this. Did it seep through into the dogs? <laughs> hey you, get this down to the lab pronto. Yes, sir. But why was there blood on the box to begin with? If we think about the flow of the crime, I think the reason will become obvious. Larry, you said that you transported the samurai dogs of the pushcart, correct? Oh, um, yeah. You have a great memory, Edgy. That pushcart was a bit too big for my son, you know what I mean? So to make sure everyone could see him, I had to pile some stuff in. I figured the samurai dogs were there, so I just used them to fill up the cart. So if what Larry says is true, then what were the boxes doing on the floor? Ah, I see! The killer took them out in order to put the body in the push cart. Exactly. And that is when I believe the victim's blood found its way onto that box. But when my men investigated that room, not a single box of samurai dogs was in there. Because the embassy staff members had already confiscated them. Yes, no doubt to hide the evidence of the murder. It's a good thing Miss Olfag managed to steal that one box before they got to them, huh? Man, it's like nothing but sheer dumb luck that's bringing this guy down, pretty much. A 50 it's points really to Gryffindor for sheer dumb luck? 20. Oh, 20? I can't remember the point <laughs> numbers. I'm sick! I don't remember anything! <laughs> okay, I, maybe it's not 20, but it's not 50. Is it like 10? Oh, no, 10. Uh, 10 points for each of you for sheer dumb yes, luck. That's, that's it. it. Man, I haven't seen that movie in a while. That's a good one. Looks like this old bag also managed to put this great thief to shame. Wait a scandalous way of putting that! I didn't steal! I received it from myself! <laughs> Quercus Alba, I'd say that this is one very fatal oversight on your part. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry to rain on your little love fest, however. How? How can he be so self-confident in a no-win situation for him like this? How uh yeah. Even if that blood turns out to belong to Mr. Cochin, then what? <laughs> so, Mr. Edgeworth, it sounds like he's not ready to call it quits yet, huh? The sole piece of evidence that was left at the scene of the crime. What am I even doing with my voice? That alone has shed light on a new fact. At the very least, we now have proof that the murder occurred in the dressing room. Yeah. And? You say that like it means something. Mm hmm. Aww. Excuse me, sirs! My favorite. Report! What were the results of the analysis? Uh, sir, the analysis came back and confirmed that the red substance is blood. I knew it! With this queer Casalba. Mr. Edgeworth, I wonder if you might humor my question. Your question? The one from before, or have you forgotten? Even if that is Mr. Cochin's blood, what difference would it make? It's your blood. I bet it will be his blood. With his wound? Yeah! <laughs> I bet it will be his blood. Like we already told you, it proves that the crime scene that was the dressing room. Objection. Objection. 
But it doesn't prove that I am your killer, does it? Ugh. That's... that's... Uh, he has a very good point. The blood on that box doesn't prove that Mr. Alba is the killer. Then... this evidence... it's meaningless. That can't be! We were so close, sir! Uh, can I talk now? <laughs> I want to smack that smug look off his face! Come on, there's gotta be something we can do. We finally found a solid piece of evidence. There must be something I can expose with it. Forensics guy. The ah! I can't think of a single thing! His eyes really bulged <laughs> out of his face. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Who was that? It's too late! I won't allow anyone to stop me now! It wasn't me, pal! It wasn't me this time, Ivor! It wasn't me, Ivor! It was me! Why did you? Um, uh, because I haven't finished reporting everything to you yet, sir! There's more. What? Hurry up and spit it out! Yes, sir! That blood I mentioned! It's not of the same blood type as the victim's blood! What? No! What? What? What do you mean it's not the same type? You mean it's not the victim's blood? If it isn't his, then who the hell's is it? I don't know, sir! All I know is that it's not the same blood type as the victim, sir! Everyone take a blood sample right now! Vampires, go! What should we do now, Mr. Edgeworth? I have no idea what what's what anymore. Neither do I. <laughs> My, what an amusing turn I of swear, events. I swear, if it's like... Uh, he gets away! Ambassador Alba has blood type O, and he's the only one in the room who has blood type O, so it's his blood. <laughs> then, like... They can do more specific types than just the Can they? Ones. Okay. Yeah. I didn't... I know there's like A negative, A positive. B, right. When they do a blood B. tests, it's not just like, oh, this blood's type A. No, they can tell. Like, They're like there's this way blood, more detail you can go into than that. That's just general case. blood type, though. Okay, okay. That blood drop proves something to be true, all right? <laughs> Namely, my words. Shut up. And which one of your words would that be? The ones where I said y your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. Not true. That blood has nothing to do with the murder investigation whatsoever. Need I remind you that the blood got onto that box long before it entered my embassy? What sort of nonsense? Yeah, it's blood, pal! There's no way it's not related to the murder. Heh <laughs> so you would like to believe. But what if someone preparing the samurai dogs had a small nosebleed? What then? Ooh. <sighs> I guess that's possible. That makes me think of a show that I saw. Damn it! Have we been wasting our time on a red herring? The blood doesn't belong to anyone connected to the case. That should be clue enough. Here's the thing. He Quirkus Alba, that. you bastard! He would only say that if he knew it would incriminate him. Silence! Don't you ever address me with such a filthy word again. Rated T for that word. <laughs> <laughs> I've wasted enough time here with you, and you will have your answers. Now let me through. Not so fast. Not so fast. Alba, it doesn't matter where you run off to, you'll never escape. Like, I'll kill Someday, you. I'll have the satisfaction of sinking my fangs into you. You'll see. And all of Interpol will be behind me, working to see that it, when the day comes. <laughs> Do you know what your words sound like to me? They sound like the whinings of a pathetic loser of a mutt. No! <laughs> oh, man. I love how he's, like, pretending to be a wolf, kind of. Is this really the extent of all we can do? No. Is the blood really from someone completely unrelated to the case? Is it Joe the mild Or is there another possibility? Someone else other than the victim? Is it the mild mannered janitor? Could be! <laughs> it's, it's Hong Kong Fui's blood. Hong Kong Fui's blood. Just when I thought I had backed him into a corner, it is I who has been backed into one. In a situation like this, what would that man do? What that man do? Oh, Phoenix, Phoenix right. right. I thought he was talking about Von Karma. I'm like, Von Karma would just lie. <laughs> fake, fake evidence. What would he who can turn any desperate situation around do? He would pull out his phone. Turn it around. That's it. I must turn my way of thinking around. It's not whose blood is this. It's whose blood could get onto a box like this. And if I think about it that way... If the blood got onto the box when the body was being placed into the pushcart, 
then the owner of said blood must have been in the dressing room at the time. And there's only one person that could be. Hong Kong Fooey. Well, I must praise you for trying so hard. Number one super guy. <laughs> Edgeworth's just humming the song and he said, <laughs> It's because of you kids that I was removed from center stage. Short for you meddling kids. And will be forced to live in the rest of my life in the shadows, unfortunately. But it's not a total loss, as the underworld will allow me more freedom than you'll ever know. Yep. Freedom like what the raven feels as it flies through the dark night sky. Are you just admitting to being the smuggler you're not free to do? They already know! He already knows that they, they know! Just can't prevent you can't lay a single finger on me! Not now or ever! The arm of the law is powerless before me! If there's just someone who's like willing to like give up. The fire emblem? Yeah. <laughs> and they give up their life essentially. Like Robin! Um, then they- Just kill him. Just kill him! They just kill him! Take- take the blame! That would be a terrible moral! I know it would be, but, like- K does it and, like, actually goes to jail. No, K's and... not gonna do it. We, we would be like, get the Damask 3. Damask 3? <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Powerless, is it? I wouldn't be so sure about that if I were you. What do you mean? Allow me to describe you in one word. Pitiful. Pitiful? How so? Quercus Alba, your wings were clipped long ago. And for someone who is trying to fly away on them without noticing that fact, pitiful is the perfect word to describe you. When birds try to fly but their wings are clipped, they're like... It's, it's kind of sad, actually. It is kind of sad. Ha! Mere words! What do you mean by his wings are clipped, Mr. Edgeworth? Just what you think it means, Kay. We already caught him in our trap a while back. With an incredibly powerful, definitive piece of evidence. Hey, hey, Earth to Mr. Prosecutor, care to speak in English? What are you talking about? What piece of evidence? The piece I speak of is, of course, this drop of blood. But we know that it's not from the victim! I don't see how it remains relevant to this case at all! Miss Von Karma, I believe that is exactly why it's very important to the case. And the part that is the most important is the fact that it's not the victim's blood. You're looking a little pale. Good, then I believe you are already aware of what I mean. Everyone except for Gumshoe looks like they go to the gym like every day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> then, you know who the blood belongs to? Do they all like train- <laughs> Whoa, what if they had like a gym for prosecutors or something? <laughs> Jacques Portsman owns it. <laughs> yeah, no, like what if there was like specific gyms for like lawyers or like attorneys? I'm also pretty sure it's supposed to be Jake Sportsman, so like sportsman. But eh, I like Jacques is very much a friend. Jacques is funnier. It could be like Brian Jacques. Also, Jakes. he didn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, okay, literally it's like, the first case is like, oh yeah, that guy was working for the smuggling ring. Second case, oh yeah, the killer was working for the smuggling ring. Third case, oh yeah, this guy helped the smuggling ring. Fourth case, oh yeah, Kalisto used part of the smuggling ring. Fifth case, smuggling ring leader takes ten hours to bring down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course I do. This piece of evidence is the irrefutable proof that will stop the killer in his tracks. The blood that soiled this box of samurai dogs belongs to this person. Yep, I got this, but I, I, I probably... Just say it belongs to Old Bag. Execute. The blood belongs to this person. What? But why is that person's blood on there, sir? That's because... That's something I have to explain to you at a later date. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, I know the answer. It's because you screwed up, that's why. Nah! I suppose there's no fooling Agent Lane. I love how Franz is good. Now give me a real answer this time. Do you or do you not know whose blood is it? Of course I know. It's the queer kiss. The blood of the rising sun on this box belongs to you, Quercus Alba. Grr! What? W what? Why is his blood on the box of the samurai dogs? He's not even a victim. The blood that fell onto the box when Mr. Cochin's body was being loaded into the pushcart. At that time, the only two people in the dressing room were the victim and his killer. So that's what you mean, if the blood wasn't the victim's. Then there's only one other person it could belong to! Yes, and that person is the murderer himself. That's the only logical conclusion. Yeah, he stabbed himself and went, Ugh! Okay, I've been hurt. But Mr. Kocha was the one who was stabbed, sir. Why would Mr. Alba have been the one who was bleeding? What if during the murder Mr. Cochin had fought back? You mean, if before Mr. Alba could kill him, Mr. Cochin managed to wound Mr. Alba? Yes, and I believe we have a piece of evidence that proves that he was bleeding then. 
<laughs> what yeah. if this piece of evidence that shows Mr. Alba was probably bleeding at the time? It's his ugly wound. Take that! Mr. Alba, you bear on your body a great wound. That was from when Damask 2 attacked me with a pair of scissors! Yeah, and that happened way after he was in the dressing room. Ah, oh, but is that what really happened? You can manufacture a weapon by smearing blood on it, so I can't just accept that as fact. Shall we try a test, Mr. Alba, and see if the shape of your wound matches the scissors? You really are something else, Mr. Edgeworth. I refuse Edgeworth. to get the bullet removed from my shoulder. You don't let a single thing slip you by, no matter how insignificant the possibility. Hm. You're one to talk, Mr. Alba. Got lost in your own embassy on the way to the bathroom. <laughs> You've managed to give the law the slip for ten years as the smuggling ring's leader. This should give you No matter the danger, you can hide every last ounce of fear and anxiety from everyone. You truly are a one-of-a-kind criminal. <laughs> I am the master of my fear. However, to think that a person such as you could miss such a large thing. You believe I've overlooked something? You said that my wound was caused by Mr. Cochin. And that it was caused here in one of the theater's dressing rooms, right? Yes, that is correct. I'd like to point out that it's simply not possible. My wound is a stab wound, and one that could only have come from a blade. I wonder where you will propose such a weapon came from. Ah! My eyes just went out. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. It's just my contacts. I'm always. surprised you're not wearing your glasses today. No, I've worn my glasses the past, like, three days. So? I don't wanna! Alright, fine. Ah! The theater was packed with security guards! <laughs> It would have been impossible for anyone to come into this area with a weapon of any sort. Just as Mr. Alba was able to bring in the Alabastian knife in a bouquet, there must have been some other way to sneak a weapon of some sort in. Ah, but as long as you can't prove what that other way is, all your talk about Mr. Cochin stabbing me is pure nonsense. Uh-huh. So if that other way does exist, you'd better hurry up and tell me now. Why can't we just disprove it like kids? You know how kids just come in and you're like, you're bad! And then that makes, like, the adults be like, oh! Or whatever. <laughs> it's like the Emperor's New Clothes. <laughs> that man's not wearing any clothes! And everyone's like, yeah, yeah he's, he's not! not. Or, I don't know, or like Max and Ruby, get the Bunny Scout leader <laughs> troop in here and just be like, ah! No. With pleasure, Bunny Scout leader's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what?! Bunny Scout leader's here?! <laughs> this piece of evidence shows us how Mr. Cochin brought a weapon into the theater. Oh! Uh how many web fiends were smuggled? <laughs> Too like many eight, eight fiends were smuggled. Everyone decided in to smuggle ways. everything. That's like when everyone decides to bring contraband into the sheriff. In Sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. You're like, I did not expect that, but it's fine. <laughs> he brought Master it in with Alice his wound. wound. Um, well, he had the thing in the flowers. There's that, but... Whenever I see those counterfeit bills now, I always think of- You remember that scene where Candace is like, all those big piles of money? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just what makes me laugh. And about you took out my huge- big piles of money. <laughs> um... Oh my gosh. Is it literally the box of samurai dogs? <laughs> is the hot dog box? <laughs> yeah, like, you could just put, like, five weapons in there and be like, We brought your samurai dogs! Using this, Mr. Cochin was able to bring a weapon into the Theatrum Neutralis. Oh, yet. really? Would you care to show me exactly how he did using that? That's... curses. I can't think of a single way to use this. If you had no confidence in your answer... You'd have been better off thinking a bit more before picking something, you idiot! Ah! The double team efforts are worse than Larry and the old lady! <laughs> Please excuse me. This time I will show you the evidence you desire. Don't know. Good music. Oh my gosh, could it be the, the statue swap? No, maybe not. Push cart again for the it's 50th time. It's not the push time. cart. What's the, the count? Uh, the, the, uh. Is there a fireplace in the theater? No. Oh crap. Yeah, my brain's not comprehending it. All right. Take that! I'm on law enforcement. This piece is known as the Yadagarasu's key. Th that key! That's the key that my father stole from here seven years ago. And it is very unique in that it is both a key and a knife. Meaning that under the guise of a key, it could have been easily brought into the theater. No! You couldn't dispose of the knife that stabbed you. 
Therefore, you wiped off the blood and placed it back in Mr. Cochin's pocket. After all, the key itself opens the safe in his office. And inside that safe, there was a document about Kodopian paper, signed by Mr. Cochin. In order to make it look like Mr. Cochin died as the leader of the smuggling ring, you had to make it so that the police were the ones who opened the office safe. Hmm. <laughs> all that hard work to save yourself only to serve to destroy you in the end. Shall we try matching this knife's blade with your wound, Mr. Quercusalba? Is he finally gonna break down? Like, it's been so long. And that is what some may call the coup de gras. Uh, impossible! You! You can't take me down! Swine! All of you! Especially Manny Cochin! This is all because of that man's betrayal! He sought to steal control of the smuggling ring from me by removing me as ambassador! Which is why he deserved to die while bearing the guilt for all my crimes for me! That's why I sent out the Yadagarasu's card, and how this incident was born! Manny was supposed to be the smuggling ring's leader who was killed by the Yadagarasu! But! I had... yet another reason! Yet another story that was supposed to play out! Manny's death was supposed to bring everything to a close! And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling prosecutors! Mr. Alba, I'm afraid there is one more question I forgot to ask. This country's or Alabast's, which country's court would you like to face first? Either way, it's game over for you. <laughs> Edgeworth! Finally. He looked like all of the sunlight. Though. <laughs> His eyes just turn into buttons like Coraline. <laughs> And he aged 20 years in about five seconds. Oh, it's like the, at last, a chair! <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the <basically>. light. <laughs> March 17th, 11.21 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh, that took way too long. Whew! This is it! The big day! It's Mr. Alba's trial today! And next week, he's scheduled to stand trial in his own country of Alabast. Franziska's heading that one. I suspect she'll be serving a full course of whiplashes at it. How is she allowed to- <laughs> She's- she's Interpol. Oh, okay. <laughs> Having to face Miss Von Karma in court right after facing you, sir? <sighs> I don't even want to think of what that would be like. Also, another fan theory that I like is that he got Christoph Gavin to be his defense attorney. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> I caught a glimpse of Mr. Alba as he was being escorted into the courthouse. And boy, he looked about as glum <laughs> as I do the day before I get my monthly paycheck. <laughs> you know... I've been thinking, that flight attendant, and even Mr. Portsman were all Mr. Alba's secret agents. Blah. Correct, the smuggling ring was common thread between all of the incidents. Cami Mio was to provide support during smuggling ops, using her job as an attendant. And Mr. Portsman was to manipulate trials related to the ring to end in their favor. Ugh, I fly airlines and even the prosecutor's office. No one was safe from the smuggling ring, huh, sir? I suspect there are even more members of the ring spread out throughout the world. Yeah, sounds like such a big op that I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. Hmm, what is it, Detective? Ah, nothing, it's just... Well, come to think of it, Mr. Ernest Amano's trial is also scheduled for later today, sir. I am aware of that. Mr. Amano has been working with the smuggling ring now for over ten years. Yeesh. He used the Amano Group's various connections worldwide to assist the ring. But all of that has to come to an end, as his conglomerate is now undergoing harsh scrutiny. I owe Mr. Amano a debt of gratitude, but he must also pay his debt to society. Well, with both arrests of Mr. Alba and Mr. Amano, I guess that about wraps up the KG-8 incident as well, huh? I suppose so. The real killer in the KG-8 incident ten years ago was Manny Cochin. And seven years ago, the killer in the second KG-8 incident was Mackerel. Those two facts are the unshakable truth. However, it seems that a lot of effort was put into hiding these and the other truths from us. And I will expose it all at the trials today. You're solving cases left and right today, aren't you, sir? CCU and Dead Man. Perhaps now these two brave souls who tried to make this truth known can rest in peace. 
By the way, I received some gifts from Ambassador Paleno. Shrimp, crab, beef. I don't need any of these, so I'm giving them to you. <gasps> what? Seriously, sir? W wait, actually, I don't think I want them anymore. Th the way you're holding them. Don't tell me they're just coupons, sir. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, have you not read the paper recently? Ever since the two countries became Codopia again, its economy has changed. Really? And it seems that Ambassador Paleno has reaped a few benefits of his own from it. He has been announced as the official ambassador of the That's newly great. reunified Codopia. And the funny thing is, you know why that happened? Because they swapped the statues. Because it's like, oh, the boss is the real one! He's the ambassador! <laughs> The other one is in jail. Yeah, they could get a new ambassador though. I can't have a daughter in jail. It was very like like important, like, oh no, whoever has the real statue, they have the right to rule. So it's like, let's test them. Oh look, Bamala is the real one. That's because of Manny well, that, Cochin. Well that worked out. <laughs> because of Manny Cochin, yeah. Because he did kind of betray. Because he's like, oh yeah, I want the best play to be the new guy, the baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is Kay, I think. Ah, uh, what a pity. Even though every item sent is a treasure, you don't seem all that interested. Well, if you don't want them, I can give them to my lovely s Oh, who's that? Oh, no, this is you trying to do it in an Edgeworth voice. <laughs> well, if you don't want them, I can give them to my lovely assistant, K. Wait! That's not what I said! So, um, Mr. Edgeworth, please let me have them, sir! Actually, come to think of it, where is Kay? How come she's still not here? Be more alert than that! Yeah. I can't believe you didn't notice! I was even mimicking at Mr. Edgeworth's voice for a bit! I totally didn't notice you or realize that voice was you! Mr. Edgeworth's like, oh Lane Z says, ferocious love blooms with each new spring. Uh, she's like 16, bro. That, he's, that's not what he was talking about. Agent Lane, a pleasant surprise to see you here. It's been a long time since I set foot in the courthouse, but I wasn't going to miss. Watching the guy who screwed up my country finally get what's coming to him. Well, that and something else. I want to see you in action in court. Is that so, Agent Lane? We flushed out all the counterfeit bills, so Zane Fa is finally at peace again. Cool. And it's all thanks to you, so I just want to say... Thanks. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day old Wolfie say thanks to Mr. Edgeworth. I should be the one thanking you, Agent Lane. If you hadn't negated Mr. Alba's extraterritorial rights... I would not have been able to bring him to trial. I believe the victory belongs to the both of us in this case. <laughs> a shared victory, huh? Look, don't get me wrong. I'll still never forgive you prosecutors. And I have zero interest in that truth thing you talk about in court. I've always done things my own way, and that's not about to change, you got that? I can respect that. Hm, I see. Well, I believe you should follow your own creed when you do your job. Yeah. And if there's ever someone your precious truth can't catch, feel free to sit around and cry about it all you want. But as for me, I'm going to get that person no matter what. Heh, <laughs> alright. It's about time for the trial to start. I'll see you later. It doesn't end with an objection. <laughs> I'll be watching your performance from the gallery. I'm looking forward to this. I prepared a whole ton of ticker tape for today's victory, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have throw some around when Mr. Edgeworth wins. It's guilty! <laughs> <laughs> <the> confetti. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you've got enough, because I'm going to go call my men up as well. A modest amount of ticker tape goes a long way. <laughs> the scene shifts to the courtroom, and the final act of this long tale begins. They're like, there's another chapter, guys, but this time you're actually a prosecutor in court. The legend of the great thief Yadagarasu. It's the story of those who chose to dedicate their lives and pursue the truth. That goes really fast. Prosecutors are those who seek a guilty verdict for the defendants they meet. And to that end, you have no choice but to win by any means necessary. That creed was forced on me since I was very young. However, I no longer think that all we prosecutors are as that. Because that is because... The other we don't see. Aww. I wish it was Gavin, though. <laughs> I wish He'd it was Phoenix Wright and he just lost big time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've only been away from the courtroom for a short time, I feel as though it's been a lifetime since I felt set foot in one. And today, more than any other day, I feel the fight rising within me. Objection! That goes. Why is that? that? Why is that text the only fast text? Okay, we got direction and planning and scenario. Oh, wow. and now we get to voice all the characters who were on before. Oh crap! I forgot about her. Rhoda Tanero. Um, 
I'm really in Mr. Edgeworth's debt for the other day. That's Kay's voice. Yep. Thanks to him, I'm still free to serve the friendly blue skies. Oh, so about my suitcases. I've been selling them on the internet, and they've been become a real sensation. Thanks to the praise the art world has lavished on my work as being truly postmodern. Oh, postmodernism's terrible. The airline has chosen me to design a new line of iFly jumbo jets. Just think, someday you will be able to take a ride in my pink whaled, yellow seated jet. Ew! Or well, wall. Well, I said whale. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sick, guys. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Which voice, <laughs> which voice did I do for this guy? I, you had like. <laughs> it was kind of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Edgeref! Ah, that rudeness of a rude man! Yeah, that's it. Heff, because of him, my time and money is wasted. But more importantly, here, I have received the most fantastic treasure recently. The Prima du Statue of the Principality of Cordopia. It weights a bit light in my hands, <laughs> but the Ambassador Peleno was most generous. <laughs> he he got the fake, old fake statue! <laughs> that's amazing! Well, Blanc was a terrible guy. Uh, who's this? Wait, are we seriously hearing from Francisco already? We finally caught Agent Hicks killer, and I was able to witness Mr. Alba's teary eyes. It feels good to finally bring everything to a close. I received another offer from Interpol to work another case in cooperation with them. However, the Kodobian courts await. Kodobia's air is supposed to be very fresh, so my whip should find new vigor there. Good for you, Franny. The Tatsu Thank you, Tatsusoro. What Awamoto. your last name? Or Iwamoto. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. This little patrolman has been fired as of today, sir. I thought I was safe since we found the gun I had dropped. But I have noticed that I had dropped my police badge too. So I guess I really broke the camel's back in that I couldn't find my badge. That's more the voice. My little wife has suddenly tripped into a dark black hole, sir! I think I'll go to the courthouse and file a complaint with Ruffles Man! Ruffles Man? Edgeworth. Oh. And then he became a Look bailiff. Look at all that illustration! We love the, them. I love the animations in this game. All the graphics. Well done, that team who made this. I, I love and appreciate all of you. Uh, who else? Emma! Emma Scott! I forgot about her! She was in it for like two seconds. And I was actually hoping to talk with Mr. Edgeworth a bit more than I did. But I've got to get going and return to Europe. <laughs> well, she has the, the DS light. I've still got a long way to go and a lot of stuff to study there. Next time I help Mr. Edgeworth on a case, I'm going to do it as a real forensic scientist. Nope. I'm sure he's going to need all the help I can give him. Scientifically. Oh, Emma, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're going to be a detective and you're going to hate it. <laughs> you're going to be a detective, but you're going to get to eat all the snacks there. you want on the job. Peach iced tea. And you're going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah! Oh, that chick. She just sounded Lauren. like she was going to cry all the time, right? Because the kidnapping was staged, I was let off easy. But I won't be going outside much anytime soon, but that's really okay. The only prison I'm forever trapped in is the cage of love! The guard's down at the detention center. Well, when he's on guard duty. <laughs> he has such a cold look in his eyes, just like that prosecutor. <laughs> but, um... Ah, stop it, Lauren! <laughs> when will you ever learn to stop being a prisoner of love? I like how she had the engagement ring pop. She did, I love that too. <laughs> I forgot about her. I forgot about half the people I in forgot this. about half the people as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we get to hear it with Manfred at the end, but no, we don't. Oh, oh do we hit the judge? Yes! <laughs> it appears there are all sorts of drama that take place outside of the courtroom. Since we judges are here day in and day out, I've only heard a few rumors, but... <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Edgeworth teamed up with a thief and became a detective. Nope. <laughs> Maybe I should team up with a bailiff and try to become a lawyer or something. <laughs> no, Judge. <laughs> judge, Ace Attorney. Please make that Capcom. We have to determine. It's basically just like that court of rules. Oh. Oh, it's Maggie Bird! <laughs> I hate her! Are you kidding me? Wow! <laughs> you hate her! She's in it way too much! This may or may not be her last appearance, though. So. Fine. <laughs> well, I barely escaped death yet again. Yeah, but boy, were we lucky to have Mr. Edgeworth help us out, huh? Yeah, but because I lost the key, I got fired from my security guard job. 
Don't let it get you down, Maggie. You've still got me. You're right, sir. I won't be sad. I'm gonna pick myself up and get through this. I wonder what my next job should be. Oh, this is actually kind of fun. I mean, Bye, Maggie. <laughs> you're, may you ne we never see you again. You've been in like three cases. <laughs> That's nothing. Old Bag has been in every game. Old Bag's better than her, though. <laughs> you are in the minority. I'm there. in the minority, but I know. Yay, Polino! I really like Polino. Why not come to Kodopia for your summer vacation? We have coupons aplenty. Right now, our embassy is proud to present our Let's Investigate a Murder Show. What? <laughs> Although, recreating that particular case has created a few small fires of its own. Some more stuff. Uh, then we had a few problems with the fire marshals. But the next event will be great. It will be an attraction entitled Capture the Yadagarasu. Of course, I hope to enlist Kay's help in creating our latest attraction. I really like Polino. He's actually probably the most helpful witness yeah, and person the, ever. Yeah, like, the most helpful witness. It's good on you, Polino. Most people I'm really like him. I'm surprised that Von Karma had her thing so early. She was in so many cases. Like, Larry wasn't She first appeared much. in case two, though. I can't believe that May Mindy ditched me and went to Japan! <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, because that's how I met Maru. <laughs> We're planning to go to Paris soon and start a business. <laughs> We're going to sell blue ocean dogs. They'll sell like hot cake hot dogs for sure. It's, in Paris. It's Paris. Nope. A blue hot dog and a blue bun. I guarantee you they'll turn your tongue and your face blue. I know I'm not really the type to work a lot or at all really, but. Oh, so I noticed that I really haven't seen that guy in the blue suit at all recently. They can't yeah, say his name. Yeah. I wonder what's up. Well, the next time we meet, I'm going to make him eat one of my dogs. Of course. They can't say Phoenix's name in this. It's always a Batman or blue Why? suited guy. I don't know. Is he copyrighted too much? <laughs> By the company that made him. It's just an in joke, basically. Oh. Do we hear from the villain? Or is it just Lang? It's. Oh! Today I gave testimony in court today as a member of the Yadagarasu. Yo, Mr. Bad! You look well, all things considered. By the way, have you noticed that elements within the rain have begun moving? They're probably fighting over who should succeed, over who should be the next boss. Although, to be honest, I wish I could forget I'd ever heard of that smuggling ring. Lane Z says, furrowy bite the poisonous snake from head to tail. No one runs afoul of the law and escapes this wolf's fangs. I'll get you all yet! Ah, uh, youth. When did I become so old, I wonder? Well, I became old at 22. Yeah, you did. I began noticing the gray hairs in my beard more. You're not gray, though. I'm thinking of retiring my mirror. Getting a new one? Or just being like, screw the mirror, I don't I'm need the mirror like anymore. Because I don't. he doesn't have to watch his back anymore. Oh, yeah. Why? I was the pink princess and the pink badger all this span of two days. Talk about busy. But it's alright, because I got a letter from my beloved Edgepo. Please take care of your hip, and when you wish to speak, first take off your headpiece. What does that mean by that last statement? <laughs> it's not like I enjoy being under a headpiece every time I see him. I've been an alien, then some creepy fuzzy pink animal, and then I was the pink princess, a great hero of justice, but ever since I was young, I was spotted wearing a stylish hat on my head, and maybe I'd prefer to wear my own costume or something, but that just seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> People in America hate her, people in Japan love her. That's why she's Maybe in all she's these more games. lovable in Japan? I think Japan likes the cranky grandma. They do, but she's not like... March... King of Prosecutors Trophy! March 17th, 4.33 p.m. Hi, Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. Woo! I feel so much better now that the trial's over. And as always, your legal prowess was top-notch, sir. Yeah, and nothing beat the look of Mr. Alpha's face when you revealed the freak secrets! I was amazed. You're like totally a different person when you step into the courtroom. Mr. Edgeworth is always ten times fiercer in court. Based on the information Mr. Alba offered up, they've begun large-scale operations to clean up the rest of the rain, which I'm happy to leave to Franciscan Agent Lane. So what are your plans now, Kay? Hmm? Oh, well, we've taken care of the creep who killed my father, so I'm not really sure. Hey, I know. Maybe I'll just keep on being Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Are you still trying to steal my job, pal? Just kidding, just kidding. I can't steal something so important to you, Gummy. Whew, that's a relief. Okay. Yeah? Even after all that's happened, are you still planning to become a great thief? Of course! 
but I don't want to tarnish the legend of the noble Yadagorasu. So I'm going to hold off on doing anything until I can make a tight three-person team of my own. <laughs> a three-person team? A three-person team of young beauties the same age as me, if possible. It'll be a magical girl anime. It's gonna be her, Emma Sky, and Maya. <laughs> Maybe? Are they all Actually, three? Maya's 19 at this point. <laughs> so... There's not a lot of 16-year-olds to play around with in this game. But she can think Truce, of close to No, her age. Trucy's like eight at this point. Trucy's like, I'm, I was about to say, I'm a bear. That does not make any sense. I'm Southern. <laughs> I'm a bear. With those criteria, I highly doubt you'll find the two other people you need. Yeah, most 16-year-old girls are very immature. No offense, But no 16-year-old girl will be like, I want to be a thief. Let's go. <laughs> My father chose to fight for the truth. I think that's what was so noble about it. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, the only things I will ever steal are the troops that have been hidden away. I'm going to work extra hard to make a world where the Yadagarasu isn't needed. <laughs> Let's both strive for such a future. Well, I guess it's time for me to get going. I see. You'll probably come back in the next Okay! Keep your chin up and stay strong, okay? And don't be a stranger! Don't worry, I'll be back! I'm sure- I'll be sure to break the lock-in on the window and sneak in. If you could, I'd appreciate it if you came in through the building's front door. It's okay, Mr. Edgeworth. The lock on my window at home has been broken for forever. Oh, one last thing before I go. Let's take a group picture, just the three of us. Yeah, a commemorative photo! Every big case has to end with one. Edgeworth's like, absolutely not. No. Hey, why not? Edgeworth, Edgeworth is very much you. Edgeworth and I are very similar. You hate taking photos. I I take photos of the things I do, not the yeah, things, but not me. Every every year at Christmas, our mom's like, let's get a big family photo. And Artie's just kind of like, no. I don't refuse. But you're just kind of standing there and you're not happy about it. No, <laughs> I'm face. not happy. <laughs> yeah. Posed photos are, you're Cheesy. not actually happy during them. Yeah. You're, you're faking it. Don't tell me you're camera shy, Mr. Edgeworth. Of course not, Detective. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm taking the picture now. Hey, come back here. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't run away from this, sir. It's just gonna be an epic shot. Ah, hey, Detective Gumshoe. Is he wrestling him? S stop that, I can't be seen doing that. <laughs> okay, I'm totally taking it now. Say cheese! What is this photo gonna be of? Oh my gosh. And thus the long tale of the KG-8 incident came to a close. I saw the demise of a smuggling ring and the birth of a little great thief. But there is a little time to rest and relax. For I am eager to tackle the investigation into a new case. The reason for my eagerness is... My want to pursue the truth. And... I want to believe in the strength of those who use the power of the law for good. Uh -huh. As someone who has chosen to live my life as a prosecutor, that is my new creed. What? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It looks like he's about to eat the key in her hair. It's K was doing selfies before selfies were a thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, this came out, what, like 2009? 2009. Yeah. I love how Edgeworth's like, I can't be seen in a photo. I thought it was going to be like Gumshoe tackled him to the ground and then he was like. <laughs> yeah, no. So that's Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations. There. Oh, there's, there's Edgeworth. There's, there's Francisco. Francisco. There's Lang. There's Gumshoe. And there, oh, there's Ken. I thought it was going to be a Callisto um, Yule. <laughs> no, it's just Ken. She had the key in her hair.